Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm sorry it's been so long, but I've got something juicy. I've been figuring out how to use the wireless capabilities of the Canon C70, and today I'm going to show you how to control your camera remotely over a network. Bam, let's get into it. Right after you slap that subscribe button. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm a videographer, editor, and all-round entertainment technician in downtown Toronto. I've had the C70 since it came out, and one thing I never really did was fire up the wireless functionality. First, you were gonna need a couple of things. The C70 has networking functionality, but doesn't actually have have a network device in it like the Wi-Fi radios and the Canon DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. There's a small list of recommended wireless adapters for the C70 and I chose the Edimax EW7822 UAC because it was the smallest, it was cheap at less than $40, and it was easily available on Amazon. Link in the description below. For this Wi-Fi adapter and some of the other recommended Wi-Fi adapters, you will need a female USB-A to male USB-C adapter. Also linked below. This has to be a dumb adapter. It cannot be one of the adapters you use for your your MacBook that splays into several ports. I tried. So once you have an adapter and a way to plug it into your camera, plug it into the USB-C port and turn your camera on. Hit the menu button and scroll over to network settings. In network settings, the first option is to enable or disable the network. Hop into that and hit enable. After a few seconds, if your adapter works, some new options in the menu unlock. To get started, go into new connection wizard. In there, you have three options, FTP transfer, IP streaming, and browser remote. We are only gonna cover browser remote in this video. I'm gonna make another video covering the other functions. If new connection wizard is not popping up but your adapter is working, it probably means you have previously set up a connection and are connected to it. You can go to connect and select disconnect to fix that. Okay, in the new connection wizard, select browser remote and it will give you a little synopsis of what you were about to do. Hit okay. Then it pops you into communication settings. This is your network setup. This will also be saved as a communication setting preset to make life easier in the future. From here, you can select an existing network setting if you have already made one in the camera or you can create a new one. We are going to set up a new one. From here you can select Wi-Fi or Ethernet. You can use a dumb USB-C to Ethernet adapter to use a wired connection with the camera if you would rather, but compatible adapters may vary. We are going to hit Wi-Fi and then wait. Next, you can select or create a network. You have options to refresh, put the camera into camera access point mode, which makes the camera a hotspot. You have an option to connect with WPS if you want to connect with WPS to a router. And then you'll have a list of all the Wi-Fi networks that the camera sees. This time, I am just gonna make a hotspot with the camera access point mode, but you can just connect to your router if you were able. I'm figuring that setting up a hotspot will be the most common usage for a run and gun shooter. In camera access point mode, there are two options, easy connection or manual connection, in case you have some specifics for the camera network. I'm going to hit manual connection because I want to set my own SSID name and password. I will name the camera SSID for the hotspot and hit OK. Then it asks if you want automatic or manual channel settings. I'm going to hit automatic and let the camera pick a channel. Next is encryption preferences. I'm going to hit AES and set a password. Then it asks about IP address settings. And again, I'm going to use automatic to let the camera pick an IP address. And then it asks if you are OK to save these settings. Hit OK and the camera lags a bit as it saves. You aren't done yet though. Hit OK to continue and wait. Now that the network is set up, you can select or create a network function setting. A network function setting is like a preset for different functions the camera can perform over the network. I'm going to go to create new. Then it asks you to connect the camera with your device. You can use your mobile device or a computer, but there is a big difference. There are far more options on a full desktop browser as opposed to a mobile browser. For now, I'm going to connect with my phone by putting in the credentials I created. Then the camera asks if you want one user control, which is full control, or two user control, which makes it so that one user controls the camera and one user controls metadata. I'm going to hit one user control and create a username and password. If you have already created one, it'll pop up here by default. Hit OK and wait. Hit OK again and select a slot to save a combination of communication settings and function settings as a connection preset and the camera will lag a little again as it saves. It will then show off what you did and you can hit OK to get back to the menu. And the camera will lag yet again. Congratulations! Hopefully you have successfully set up connection setting. You can do this again and save multiple different connection settings that do different things. Let's say you want to use a browser remote using a router instead of the camera hotspot and often switch between home and a studio. You can save two different browser remote settings with the two different network connections to make your life easier. And then you can also save a third for the camera's hotspot and so on. All right, once the setting is saved, it is automatically active. At the top of your camera, it should say AP and remote as your camera is running in access point mode for remote control. On your device, you should still be connected to your camera's network. And what you have to do is type your camera's IP number into your web browser. You can check the camera's IP number by going into the C70's network settings menu, hitting connection settings, selecting your current config, hitting check settings, and scrolling to the second page. In this case, using a hotspot, it should be 192.168.1.2. 
You can also check in your phone or computer under network settings and looking for the router's IP number since your camera is the hotspot in this case. Type the IP number into your browser and then log in with your username and password. And there we go. On a mobile browser like your phone, you can manipulate clip metadata, lock the app, start recording, initiate a live view and initiate IP streaming. The live view feed is choppy, but it's great for framing shots and generally keeping an eye on the camera. You can also tap around and move your autofocus box. If you click the three dots in the corner, you get an option to change the live view resolution, as well as some options for how the remote looks and talks to you, and a feature we aren't going to get into today, secure transfer. Let me know if you want to see a video on this. Now on a desktop browser, you have a lot more control. You can do everything you can do on the phone, but you can also add or remove NDs, change your iris, change your ISO, and change your shutter angle. You can also manipulate your white balance as well as your autofocus and tracking settings, as well as having buttons to lock autofocus, adjust focus, enable one-shot auto iris, switch SD card slots, some shot marking tools, and a button to lock just the touch focus. There's also a whole other drop-down menu to change how your ISO, NDs, iris, and autofocus function. On a desktop browser, the remote is very full-featured and really, really handy. You can cheat with some device browser combinations to get a full remote on a phone, like using Chrome or Firefox on an Android phone set to desktop site before logging into the camera. It doesn't seem to work like that on an iPhone, though, so this might take some effort if you were trying to display the full remote on a phone. Now, here are some extra quirks and settings. Using wireless eats battery life, so be prepared. Throwing a fully charged battery into the camera while sending an HDMI feed currently shows me at 162 minutes. However, if I turn on the browser remote in either hotspot mode or connected to a router, it seems to bring my battery down about 15% to around 140 minutes, but it actually seems like it goes faster than that. So if you are planning on using it for a whole shoot, be mindful and bring extra batteries. Another thing is that the IP streaming button on the remote will be blacked out unless you also have have the camera set up for IP streaming as well. But even if you do have it set up, the IP stream doesn't show up here in the remote and this button just turns the feed on and off. You'll still have to use something else to catch the IP stream. I'll go over how to set it all up in the next video. There are also some advanced settings in the network settings menu that you can only access if you are disconnected from using network features. Here you can adjust the different communication settings presets you have set up. You can also adjust the function settings presets and there are some browser remote settings for things like user settings and ports, etc. Okay, so what would you use this for? This is really handy if you have multiple cameras doing an interview setup so you can monitor and adjust settings remotely, or if you have a camera that is rigged on something or that you can't quite reach. This can also make you look like a customer service genius in certain situations. Being able to send a feed of shot framing and some other data to the client, just make sure that you lock control first. If you like these videos, please subscribe to the channel. I've got more videos like this in the pipe. If you have any questions or anything you would like me to cover, please let me know down below. Have yourself a fantastic day.